To tell you the truth, I've always been in awe of artists, painters, musicians, sculptors, authors, poets, people who can use their creative talents to generate pleasurable and meaningful things to fill our world with and please others. Well, I guess I'll just have to be satisfied with interpreting other people's work as a narrator for all of you. But the notion of where people find inspiration as an artist is the theme of tonight's story, another from Dr. Creepin's Vault. So, my dear friends, I think once again it's time for you to sit back and relax with your favourite drink. And listen. My father is a painter. It's been his long-time hobby. I can recall him painting for as long as I can remember. His paintings are mostly desert-like landscapes. Sometimes the pieces include dark humanoid creatures. Other times they don't. In one of his paintings, probably my favourite one of his, there's this huge sea of sand with various oddly shaped stone structures dotting the landscape with this massive red half-circle taking up almost the entire background, like a massive and beautiful sunset. He has a whole gallery set up at his place, to be honest. As a child, I recall asking him, why did he keep painting these desert locations? And each time he would answer, telling me it's the landscape of a place he'd been to once. Being a kid, mesmerized by his father's painting skills, I didn't question it too much. Well... As of today, the story is quite different. I have a feeling my father is a painter, whose inspiration is otherworldly. Literally otherworldly, not as a wordplay or an exaggeration. I think my old man has been to another world, or dimension, or a universe, or something. I don't even know what to call that. Or at least he's seen some otherworldly place firsthand. I was recently discharged from the military, and soon after returning to civilian life, I realized I needed a break from the stressful life in a bustling city. That's when I asked my father for the keys to our summer cottage. And that's where I am now. Everything is great here. It's quiet and scenic. I go fishing, or rather go napping, by the pond close to the cottage, and the best thing about this place is that there's nobody here to disturb me. I really needed that break from people. I needed that alone time. This morning I opted to go for a bike ride, but when I set foot in the garage, a bunch of boxes caught my attention. Letting my attention deficit take control of me, I forgot my original mission in there and dug straight through the boxes. Most of them contain nothing important or interesting. Old photo albums, unused and forgotten utensils and tools, and even some shoes. There was one box that contained something interesting. It was a helmet of some sorts. I can't really say it was a motorcycle helmet exactly. It looked like a weirdly painted Red Hood helmet. Well, the comics character Red Hood. It had this futuristic look with no facial features and two eye holes. Other than a dent for the nose, there was nothing spectacular about this helmet. Well, maybe aside from the way it was coloured. Black in the back, white in the front, and red markings over the eye holes. Looking at the thing, I realised it had to be opened somehow, otherwise it's impossible to wear the thing. So, I poked and prodded at it for a couple of moments, before my finger hit a button where an ear should be, and a part of the back side opened up, making space for a head to fit in. It looked cool, so, me being me, I decided to wear the thing. And that's when things went weird. The moment I locked the backside of the helmet around the back of my neck, my vision became blurred, and the room spun, distorting my vision. I blinked a few times, thinking the helmet might have been a little too tight, making me dizzy, but my vision remained distorted. What the f- I muttered to myself as I felt a heat wave hit my body in front of me, causing me to close my eyes for a second. 
The moment I opened them up again, I wanted to throw up. I felt as if someone had punched me in the gut really hard. I stood there, motionless, speechless, with the thoughts distorted inside my head. It was as if I was submerged underwater, and everything around me seemed fuzzy and sounded diluted. What I saw in front of me was breathtakingly beautiful and terrifying at the same time. Just like looking at a fire. You know it's beautiful, but you won't touch it because you know it'll hurt like a motherfucker. Well, that's exactly how I felt when I saw that I was standing in the middle of a desert. Found myself standing in the middle of what I can only describe as an endless sea of sand dunes and geometrically impossible stones. I swear, some of these stones looked as if someone had taken some sort of liquid, thrown it into space and petrified it, immediately forming these oddly shaped stones. At least, that's what I think these structures were. I'm not even sure if these were actual stones. None of it made any sense. One moment I was in my garage, and the other I'm in this desert location. Something had to be wrong. Could I be hallucinating? I ran my hands across my body and, much to my delight, everything was in place. I could even feel the sweat soaking my clothes, even though it was a rather cool morning. I wasn't supposed to be sweating. I turned around and a blinking red light met my eyes. It was so bright I felt as if someone had shot a flare gun straight at me. The sudden luminescence was so painful, I dropped to my knees, gripping my head all over. Not to mention that the head suddenly went from bad to outright unbearable. Running my hands over the helmet, I clicked on the button that opened it up and pushed it off myself. The dizzying feeling returned. I find myself back inside the cottage garage, kneeling on the floor as the helmet rolled around on the floor. With thoughts racing through my mind. Oh, was I losing my shit? Or was this helmet something else? Hell, I thought this might have some hallucinogenic mold inside or something. Some sort of mind-bending paint. Oh, I don't even know. There was absolutely no way what I'd seen was true. It couldn't be. I mean, that's freaking impossible. In my confused state... I reached for the thing again and inspected it inside and out. There had to be something about this helmet that made me see what I'd seen. There's no way I just imagined all of that. I was sweaty and heaving because of the perceived heat of that desert. I got back to my feet and looked around in the boxes, hoping perhaps to find some clue as to what this helmet is. Amidst my frantic search, I found an older painting of my father's. That same desert landscape he always painted, with a man in it. He was painted to look like he was wearing all black, all but a tri-coloured helmet on his head. One that looked exactly like the one next to me now. And that's when it hit me. Whatever this thing was... My father drew his inspiration from the things he saw inside this thing. I got a little startled, thinking about my old man possibly doing drugs or inhaling chemicals, but, well, he wasn't that kind of a person. He's more of a straight guy, so... Eventually, my curiosity overcame common sense, and I reached for some seemingly magical headdress. Placing it over my dome once again, I muttered, Here goes nothing. As I locked the helmet around my head, dizziness. And there I was again, in that desert world. This time, however, the scenery was slightly different. I was in what seemed like the outskirts of a ruined city. I could make out chunks of buildings sticking out of the sand. Looking around, I realized why the first time I was blasted on my ass by a heatwave. Wherever, whatever this place was, there was a huge sun covering most of its sky. 
The whole place was a dead sand ball, long consumed by the heat of the fiery sphere that was forcing me to find cover. I almost felt bad for the place. If there was anything living on that sand ball, it was probably long since dead. The scorching ball of fire in the sky above me was even hotter this time. I could see the surrounding air heating such a way it appeared to dance all around me in a macabre apocalyptic scene that made me slightly fearful. Not knowing my limitations in this place, I ran towards what seemed to be a more exposed part of the ruins. My steps sounded like I was walking on something gooey. I didn't want to look down and find my shoes melting off, so I just kept on running towards what I'd assumed to be a cooler location. When I was close enough to what appeared to be abandoned buildings, I noticed some movement. I could see shadows moving around. Humanly shaped shadows. Figuring this place wasn't as devoid of life as I'd thought before, I pressed forward and watched people, or some sort of humanoid beings, walking around. They were, in fact, shadow people. Or rather, beings made up of a shadowy substance. Trying to figure out whether they were hostile, I approached them, ruffled some sand beneath my feet. They never reacted. I called out. Hey. No response. A chill ran down my whole body at that moment, and I turned to my left. One of them had passed right through me. I stood there, motionless for a moment trying to process the whole ordeal. I couldn't make any sense of what I was experiencing. It was like a ghost had passed through me. I shuddered at the notion. I was a spectator specter in their world. Or they were ghosts or something. Maybe they were even just visions conjured within the helmet. Something was wrong with this whole thing. And I'm not sure I wanted to know what, but... I couldn't make myself get the damn thing off. It had just tapped into something inside of me. It made me want to stick around for longer. And so, I did. I walked around, looking around at the sunken buildings, swallowed by merciless desert, and these shadowy figures were walking around aimlessly. I stopped and stared at a few of them for a while. They were walking around, acting like they were conversing, and then, suddenly, they ran. Surprised, I followed their path. They seemed to be screaming at each other as they ran. The oddest part about that was how slow they'd moved, even though they were running. I didn't even have to pick up my pace to follow. Eventually, one of them fell and convulsed on the ground. The others turned around to look at their fallen friend. Their body language gave out the fact that the fall of their comrade upset them. And then the rest of them fell, one after the other, in a very familiar way. Their bodies twisted and turned on their way to the ground, in a way akin to a human being shot. I knew this kind of thing, obviously. I'd left the military once my contract ran out because of what I can sum up as well, battle fatigue. That's when I realized that these things must have been a reenactment of something. Something sinister. I was about to take off the helmet for good. I didn't want to stick around to see any more horrors. But a cold chill ran through my body again. I felt as if someone had poured cold water all over me. Distracted, I put my hands down to see that another shadowy figure had passed straight through me again. He walked a few steps forward before making a stabbing motion to his own neck area and dropping to the ground like a lead weight. Suicide, I suppose. Whatever was bringing these people to their end, it was terrible. I couldn't watch any more of that. It was too much to bear. I didn't want to see that kind of crap ever again in my life. I've had enough of that. So... I turned away from the fallen shadowy figure 
unwilling to face his actions. I was about to take my helmet off again, but I didn't when I saw a dark hand make its way out of another shadowy figure. It was followed by a pitch black and featureless head coming out with a black body to match. It slowly made its way out of the shadowy figure, mesmerizing me with its jerking movements as it crawled out of the apparition. I wanted to move, but I couldn't. My brain didn't let me. There was no fear, however, only awe at the sight unfolding before me. Once it was fully materialized, it resembled a black mannequin dressed in black pants and a thick black raincoat. The thing got up to its feet and marched straight at me, thinking it was another apparition. I just stood there, watching it come at me. And then it swung its clenched fist. I thought, oh, it'll pass right through me. And then I felt something hard hit the side of my head. Pain surged through my skull, disorienting me, forcing me a few steps back. Before I even realized it had hit me, another punch landed in my solar plexus, dropping me to my knees. Out of breath, I was cursing, battered and confused. I tried making sense of what had just happened, but then I felt a rough knee connect with my chest, sending me staggering backward again. The faceless thing was charging at me. I was trying to regain my senses and began swinging almost automatically. I connected with its body, but my blows did nothing. It wouldn't budge. It didn't feel a bloody thing. Hitting this thing felt as if I was hitting some sort of plastic. The thing landed a vicious uppercut on me, sending me on my ass before it grabbed hold of my head. Visions flooded my mind. Visions of a prosperous, futuristic society in a beautiful world. It seemed like a perfect place to be in. From this beautiful scenery, my perspective was shifted to a room filled with shining beings screaming at each other in a language my brain couldn't even comprehend. From there, my perspective was shifted to that of a battlefield where shining beings were eradicating one another with some plasma-producing machines. They literally turned one another to fucking dust with those things. I saw the group from before. They were running. They were different, more human than the shining beings, and yet not quite human. They were shot with these plasma machines too, but it only made holes in them. A war that was a war, all too familiar, all too painful to watch. I screamed at my tormentor to stop showing me these visions as I thrashed my body around. I didn't want to see any more of that. I couldn't handle this kind of thing any more. The thing completely ignored my screaming, and its grip was strong enough to keep me pinned down no matter how hard I tried to get free. I could feel my blood reaching boiling point. I could feel the cortisol rushing through my arteries. It's a feeling I can only describe like waves of cold water running through my body and setting me alight internally. I had entered a full-blown fight moment when my perspective was shifted once more. This time I was in a laboratory watching capsules in which mannequin-like things were contained. Then my perspective shifted once more back to the battlefield. I was this massive spaceship thing shooting some sort of energy blast into the sky. I kept on trying to get free from that thing. My perspective shifted once again. I was staring at the sky from a rooftop in a futuristic city. The sky was growing redder by the second. I could see the sun growing closer and closer. I could feel the heat getting worse and worse, until I felt myself catch fire. I felt the searing pain of my skin catching fire before my perspective was shifted back to that thing that had assaulted me. It let go of my head and straightened up, staring down at me. 
I assume that's what it was doing anyway. And then it turned and pointed at the stellar fireball behind me. I looked up, feeling the light blinding me once again. That's when it hit me. The thing was showing me the end of this planet. They'd fucked up. They'd fucked up badly. They killed themselves in a sort of suicidal war, pulling themselves closer to the star that their planetary system orbited. Sadness became mixed with violent anger, and I felt myself shake on the ground. The thing, uncaring, pointed at me, and I heard a choir of deep, guttural voices roar inside my head. The sound made me squirm in pain. It felt as if someone had stabbed me in my eardrums. At least I think I knew what this motherfucker wanted. It wanted the helmet. I smirked under the layers of plastic and metal covering my face at the realization of a simple fact. If I take this thing off, I should be safe away from this mannequin-looking asshole, well, based on my previous experience of taking the helmet off. You want it? There you go, I said before clicking on the button at the side of the helmet, before quickly tossing it away in sheer spite. Before the desert world dissipated into nothing, and I found myself laying on the floor of the garage, I saw that thing make a run for it. The helmet was a few feet away from me, and surprisingly, my body wasn't hurting anymore. That fucker will never have it as long as I have this thing off. That's what I hope, at least. Now, I've been sitting here for the last couple of hours, worn out by my internal stress-induced emotional volcano, contemplating whether I should call my father to tell him I know that he's a painter with an otherworldly source of inspiration or not. I'm not even sure what should bother me anymore. The fact that there are living, alien beings out there. The sad fact that they are eerily similar to us in their self-destructive ways. Or the fact that my dad basically owns a gate to their world. So another weird and wonderful one there from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them all for you. Very interesting one that. What would you do if you found such a helmet in your garage? Well, go for a ride on my bike probably. <laughs> anyway, um, working on some longer projects at the moment. Going to be some more two-hour epics coming up in the next few weeks, hopefully. And of course they do all take time, so um, apologies if uh, I'm doing one or two shorter stories recently. Um, working on the bigger things, like I said. Well, it's enough for me for one evening. You all stay safe out there. If you're at work, if you're driving, I hope this helps pass the time just a little bit easier. Well, till next time, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?